today who hear the Holy Gospel concerning the very first miracle that Jesus performed as recorded in the Holy Gospels. Jesus, his disciples, and his mother Mary were present at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And we find the problem that at the wedding, they ran out of wine. And Jesus has the servants bring him water in these large containers. He does that saying to his mother who pointed out the problem, Our Lady, when did you told him they have no wine? He said, well, what does that have to do with me? My time has not yet come. But this would be the first miracle that is recorded of our Lord. And so his presence sanctifies marriage because they were at a wedding reception celebration of marriage. And so in Holy Mother Church, we have seven sacraments, one of them being the Holy Sacrament of Matrimony. And sex is created by God. The union of man and wife is the will of God. He tells Adam and Eve, go forth and multiply. He allows man to participate with him in bringing forth more human beings where they cooperate and procreate and God himself provides the soul in each person. And so we see that Jesus, because he is divine God who created everything, by whom everything was created and for whom everything was created has power over everything, he is able to provide them with wine by his will. And so the water is changed into wine, such that the steward who is organizing everything, in charge of everything, is concerned that usually in these gatherings, the best wine is provided first. And as you go through that, because you're tasting the best wine first, then at the end you could use less uh, expensive wines, not as good tasting. And this turns out to be the best wine. Why are they having it? later at the end. And that is a theme you will find in our, the teachings of our blessed Lord, that the last will be first and the first will be last. How do we apply that to our lives? Well, we know that Satan was proud and disobedient and tried to elevate himself to the throne of God. And he was cast down. He was the greatest, most beautiful, brilliant of the angels, the light bearer. The highest place in the angelic creation. And he was cast down. And he tempted Adam and Eve, saying, well, if you eat that fruit, you will become just like God. Again, they wanted to be proud and disobedient to God. And so Jesus points out that the last shall be first, the first shall be last. What we consider in our earthly 
uh, judgment as being great because of power, reputation, money, property, all the things, tr armies, powerful, is nothing in God's sight. He lifts up the lowly and confounds the proud. He chooses the weak of this earth to confound the proud, to show that it is his power working through us who are weak, working through us. He is accomplishing the work. Satan has the opposite view. And I believe that you will find that there will be people in heaven that you wouldn't expect. And there will be people not there that you would have expected to be there. Because in a worldly judgment, oh, well, they must be saintly. They, they're doing God's work. And Jesus said, in the end, they will come to me and say, but Lord, I healed the sick in your name. I raised the dead in your name. I did all these things, and Jesus will say to them, Depart from me, I never knew you. There are some people in Catholic tradition who think they're really something. They think they really know. And they open their mouths and give opinions beyond their station. Yes. And we shall have to give an account for every idle word. How will they ever do that? There are those in tradition who think they are special. Yes, they are special. But I believe that we must all have humility and obedience. As scripture says, have that mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who though being in the form of God, humbled himself and took on our form and became obedient even to dying on the cross. Humility and obedience. Don't see it very often. Not only among laity with big mouths, but also among the priests who think that they can function without obedience to anyone. Independent priest, that's not Catholic. Chapels can be supported by the layman. Yes, that's their job. But the layman do not determine who will function there among the priests. That is congregationalism. It is Protestant, and it is not Catholic. The priests cannot function without a bishop. Now, those who are in communion with the apostate Novus Ordo become one with them. So those who think they are special and they're in a good place, unfortunately, I must tell you that we do not accept SSPX or anything that comes from SSPX because they are one with the apostate conciliar church. SSPX is one with them in that in marriages 
they now permit the Novus Ordo priest to come into their chapel and perform the wedding. And then the SSPX priest will celebrate the mass. Well, why doesn't he perform the wedding? And those who leave SSPX, for the most part, recognize the local bishop as their bishop. Yeah. But they can't obey him because, you know, he's heretical. Well, if you're in communion or recognize heretics, that makes you err. That is a serious problem. Not to mention the validity question. Do I say that the Novus Ordo sacraments are invalid? No. Do I say they're doubtful? Yes. Therefore, they can't be accepted. Do I say SSPX orders are invalid? No. Do I say they are doubtful? Yes, highly. Anything that comes from Cardinal Leonard, who was a high-ranking Freemason and a leader of the assault on the Catholic Church at Vatican II, anything from him is highly doubtful. The Catholic Church is now being eclipsed by an entity which has, as in the Arian heresy, taken over the buildings. But they do not have the Catholic faith. They can pretend to be Catholic. But if you look at the Novus Ordo Missae, which is preparing for the Novus Ordo Seclorum of the Antichrist, if you look at it, it is the same new rite that's being used in the Episcopal Church, the Anglican Church, and the Lutheran Church, where they do not believe in the propitiatory sacrifice of the Mass. Luther insisted on eliminating the Mass. And Thomas Cranmer, Archbishop of Canterbury, hated the Mass and wanted it removed. And in the Novus Ordo Seclorum, or the Novus Ordo Missae, rather, you find that the same prayers are removed from the Roman canon as were removed by Luther and Cranmer. And that tells me there's something very different and seriously wrong. The only mass of the Roman rite is the Tridentine mass. It's not the extraordinary form. It's the only form. The only form. And the new rite is a schismatic, heretical Protestant form. It's not the mass. It's a communion service. Well, having said all this, I must remind you, the last shall be first, the first shall be last. People are going to be very surprised, but I don't think anyone should be proud and haughty here on this earth during these days. If you are blessed to have a valid priest and valid sacraments, humbly and gratefully, obediently give thanks to Almighty God. We're told that in the end days, Satan will be very powerful and the deception will be so great as to lead even the elect astray possible. I think there are many people who believe they're in the church, who believe they're getting valid sacraments, but it's not the Catholic faith, and most likely the sacraments are invalid. That is a 
serious problem. Give thanks to our Lord that the Catholic Church still exists, even though it is eclipsed by this other entity. And pray in humility and obedience that you are among the elect, not deceived, not led astray, and that God will give you the grace, the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge to be one with him in nomine patris.